Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Hakuna La Planta. My name is Kevin and today I'm going to show you some plant updates. So recently I was looking through my photo gallery back a year, so roughly any time between January to May 2021, and I came across a few pictures that like they were kind of unrecognizable because they look so different now. So I thought I would show you five plants today that have just grown so much in the past year. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I already recorded this video and my microphone died. So here's some footage. Of me. <laughs> and then there's a small little clip of me realizing that the mic isn't working. That was towards the end of the video. So you could see that there are three cuttings So yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm tired. I ate a whole pizza, that's right, I did. I have my coffee here. <laughs> and we're just gonna chug it and get on with this video. <laughs> okay, so the first plant is very polarizing. It is the philodendron strawberry shake. So I'm gonna talk specifically about this picture I found from April, 2021. So here's the picture. You could see that there's three single node or single leaf cuttings in this pot of pond. And I was like, I think I still have that pot. She looks a bit weird just because I haven't done anything with her. I kind of ignore her, except for when I need to change the nutrients in the nutrient solution. And y'all know that strawberry shakes, philodendron strawberry shakes are one of my favorite philodendrons. I just like the mystery, the surprise. I don't know, I'm never bored with this plant. It is another reason why I chop up a lot of them, uh, just because I wanna see how the variegation acts, but I'll just grab her now, she's on the ground. Okay, so yeah, here she is. The biggest plant in here, and I find this interesting because obviously we know the green parts of a leaf have chlorophyll in them, and those parts take up sunlight, make food and energy for the plant. Your plant should grow bigger. And it's kind of demonstrated in this plant. So you could see, like there's only a touch of irrigation here, even leaves that are variegated, it is predominantly green. Here's the third leaf up here, and then even the top one here. So stem-wise, leaf-wise, leaf one of the biggest. So moving on to the second plant in here. <laughs> this is chaos. It's kind of the same. So a lot of green in the leaves. And it's interesting because I feel like there was more balanced variegation in the earlier growth here. I mean, I guess this is a half moon, but even then, like, there's a lot of nice irrigation there. But after that, all the leaves kind of followed a predominantly green kind of pattern, and therefore the plant was a lot bigger. And that brings me to this small little cute plant here. So these four leaves, actually five leaves that are in my hand, this is the third plant. For a long time, it had a lot of cream leaves, as you can see, obviously the plant can't use these cream leaves for energy, so it has to rely on the bits of green here to result in a smaller plant. And I do find, I mean, at least in my experience, when there's a new growth point from single node cuttings and it is more cream, it is more variegated, then the plant tends to be slower and smaller. And yeah, I just found it interesting because like the picture, I'll show you again, they were all cut at the same time, they were all propagated at the same time, but the propagations with more green ended up in larger leaves, larger growth, and ones with less green resulted in small. Obviously this like makes sense. And obviously that's like common sense, but I just thought it was interesting to actually see it. I remember there was more cuttings and then I found a picture from January. So here it is. I initially propagated this plant in wet perlite in a Ziploc. And I have three of the plants here. So let's talk about them just because I'm obsessed with, you know, strawberry shakes. And this specimen is one of the more interesting ones. It stalled so much because the leaves at the bottom were predominantly cream and you could see that they stayed very small. The moment the plant got more green, so this is like the first leaf with a lot of green, the leaf started getting bigger and then for some reason now the leaf 
on the top here is predominantly green variegation. So, I mean, I was happy to see that because I actually thought this plant wasn't going to survive because of all the cream. And I like can't, look at this leaf, guys. It's like pink and green. Like this looks like a strawberry. <laughs> but wow, I'm like obsessed with this leaf. I don't know why. I think it's just because it's like dual tone, just pink and green. Second one here, pretty balanced. You can see that the first few leaves had pretty balanced variegation all across. And then all of a sudden there's this green leaf. So this is the second newest. She is pushing out a new leaf, but she's totally green. So I'm wondering if this leaf is going to be variegated at all. And the last one, which I think is so cute, but I think I have to cut <laughs> cut all the leaves. So like I fell. <laughs> I think I took a propagation maybe in the fall. She has pushed out multiple growth points. I'm seeing, surprisingly, there's four growth points coming from one plant. So there's one over here. It has a half moon right here. Then there's a full cream one and then there's a full white one. I mean, a full green one. So that's one plant. The second plant has balance variegation here. The third one is an all cream plant. So this is one leaf. The second leaf is dying off already, fully cream. And I'm not sure what this new leaf is. It's hard because sometimes when they're young and they're pushing out new leaf, they don't show their true colors until they're hardening off. So you could see that she's potentially balanced. Um, the one before that's pretty balanced. So, so that's the reason why I guess the plant is smaller because she does have multiple growth points in addition to all these cream leaves. So the plant has to divide the energy and food to the rest of the plant. <clears throat> oh my God, my voice is gone. <laughs> But yeah, I think this one is so cute. I'm obsessed with this one. And oh my God, I feel like this video has turned into a philodendron strawberry shake video. But I guess because we're on the topic, I want to I want to show the Ziploc ones. I guess this might be an update from my um, philodendron propagation video uh, that came out in November. I will put out a link somewhere in this video and in the description below. So I didn't pot them up. So they're still in Ziplocs over here. But yeah, I wanted to talk about these because um, specifically in my uh, houseplant tour video, I got a lot of questions about how I got to grow them this big, guys. So, <laughs> look at these babies. I love philodendron strawberry shakes. Unfortunately, another reason why I wanna showcase them in this video, because this is probably the last time they're going to look like this. I was planning soon to chop these up into single node cuttings. And the reason for that is, I mean, look at these. The variegation is pretty balanced in every leaf. And even the ones that don't have a lot, like they still have a lot more than other ones I've had in the past. <clears throat> but to answer that question about how do I get leaves this big, you know, I kind of linked it to giving it a lot of light, giving it um, a lot of nutrients. Obviously these plants were in LECA and passive hydroponics before. And you could see ever since I transferred her into moss, she's pushed out a few leaves, but you could see that they're substantially smaller, although gorgeous. This one's the same. So that leaf over there, that leaf over there. And variegation wise, honestly, strawberry shakes, it's so hard. You can't even see future Kevin zoom in. Can you even see? There's like a light pink stripe and then a dark pink stripe. That's when you know that the chance of the variegation being there and the new propagation is strong. Looking at this, oh, I'm dropping everything. I don't know if you could see it, but there's like, can you see it? Future Kevin zoom in. There's stripes. I don't know. It's very hard to tell in a strawberry shake. It makes me feel better about propagating this plant on top of seeing the foliage in these plants and how balanced they are. But yeah, super exciting for these plants. I love, again, how this turned into a philodendron strawberry shake video, but the first plant is the philodendron strawberry shake. Okay, so sticking to the theme of philodendron, I'm going to show you my biggest philodendron glorious.
So not quite a year, <laughs> actually pretty recent, but I'll pop a picture here. I think it's from the summer. I originally grew this plant in Lekka and I had it attached to a moss pole. She climbed it, the leaves got really big at the top. You can see that she had large leaves. I air layered it with sphagnum moss. When I saw that the plant had a substantial root system, I put it in a in a aeroid mix and she just took off. But I don't even know how I'm gonna show this. <laughs> Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you the top leaf. So, Philodigion and Glorious. So this is the second newest leaf. The newest leaf here, I love how I'm just like crawling on the ground, guys. The newest leaf, le le <laughs> I can't talk anymore. Some damage, while it was unfurling, I was pushing it. I found it later, like crushed against by Monstera. But yeah, um, I can't really show the whole plant. As you can see, I'm gonna have to like do some squats like this. Do you see the whole plant? <laughs> But yeah, in this pot of soil. Oh, she's touching the ceiling, everyone. Look. Oh my God, I'm gonna break the leaf. Okay, look at the roots. Okay, that's as far as I can do it. So any secrets? I don't really have secrets. The aeroid mix is just a standardized aeroid mix with, this one specifically is coca coir, some charcoal, some bark, some pumice. Then when I was mixing the soil, I put worm castings and a 444 organic fertilizer. I think it's by Gia Green. Gaia Green? Gia Green. <laughs> She's not under a roll light. She sits actually pretty covered from my south facing window. I have my gigantic Monstera Albo. I have my Philodendron McDowell over here. And then she's right in front of them. But yeah, I think also because I was air layering the plant here. I don't know if y'all could see the roots, but maybe because the plant feels secure. It's kind of like when a ep epiphytic plant climbs a tree and the roots just latch on. It kind of gives permission for the plant to start maturing. And I think that's another reason why it's doing well. And it's just funny guys, cause I didn't realize she's kind of bigger than my mature Philodendron melanocrysum. And I'm pretty sure I bought my mature melanocrysum and my juvenile glorious at the same time. This one, is just less picky than the melanocrysum. <laughs> but anyhow, the second plant is the philodendron glorious. Okay, how do I put you back without damaging you? Okay, let's do a Hoya. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this Hoya, guys. I really am. You know, it's shocked me so much at the amount of growth. Basically just took two cuttings. And for some reason, she just started p pushing out a lot of growth from everywhere. So the third plant is the Hoya Mathilde. I originally got this plant um, from Crystal Star Nursery. They're great. I originally had her in soil and I'll pop in a picture here. She did fine. Like she did fantastic actually, more than fine. She was on this hoop trellis um, and then she bloomed a few times. She was a lovely. But at this time I was experimenting, propagating Hoyas in Lekka. And I think specifically for this one, I first propagated them in water. If I have a picture, I'll put it here, but I think there were two cuttings, a little bit of water roots. And then at that point I put her into Lekka and popped her under a grow light and the rest is history. Um, the picture that you're seeing or saw was from April of last year. So it's been a year. Let me grab her. She's over here. I'm sure y'all have seen her recently, but oh guys, oh my God. How did this come from two cuttings? I'm not even joking. People think I lie about this. I am not lying. It shocks me too. Look at this. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm forgetting the term, but for Hoyas, they like to grow up and no matter what you do to them, they will force something up, whether that's a new growth going upwards. As more grew and started going down, then more started coming up. Obviously, I'm feeding it the same nutrient solution that I feel feed all my plants in Lekka. And also, I'm just seeing this now. There's like, these are going to be the first blooms. Do y'all see? There's a few. They're gonna be the first blooms from this plant of the season. <gasps> wow, oh my God, I love this plant so much. Can y'all see me? Do I look like a swamp witch? I'm gonna say this here because I don't know or I don't remember the last time I've said this. The transition process from a plant living in soil to like a new medium, whether it's pond or Lekka can be very stressful for the plant. And a lot of the times the roots do die away. And so a lot of time I do recommend if you want to transfer your plant from soil to Lekka, I would recommend actually to take a cutting 
or a few cuttings of that plant, propagate it into whatever medium, just so the roots are used to that medium already and they're well acclimated and like the roots that grow at that point they are lecker roots or they are pond roots and they're used to that kind of environment because soil roots are so different and a lot of the time they do unfortunately die off and i i do think that's another reason why this plant did really well like i said i propagated her in water initially she had the water roots and if y'all didn't know water roots are very similar to roots that live or come out in lecca and so because she didn't like stress out too much she just thrived everyone okay what else <laughs> oh yeah i was gonna put this in the hoya um update video but i was a plat short in this video so here she is <laughs> in all her glory the hoya matilde okay let me put you back god the mood in them do y'all see the mood in them she is just trying to hit me okay guys the last two are syngoniums um one is, you know, one of my favorite Syngoniums. It is the Syngonium Mojito. So here's a picture. Um, this is when I think she was in luck at this point. So I think I took five cuttings. And honestly, I just continued to propagate this plant. Syngoniums, so easy. If y'all want to get into propagating plants, you need to start with Syngoniums. If not, Hoyas, because Hoyas will root from anywhere in the sun anyhow so um as i chopped it i put them into this pot of pond and here we are i just love her so much like how and i just love how there's variation in in like how the modeledness looks like sometimes it's like scattered evenly and sometimes you have more mutant looking ones um so she's in let's she was a pond and a self watering pot and i do like to keep Ooh, it's bright. I do like to keep this um, on the wet side. It does dry out uh, completely sometimes just because I tend to forget it because she's kind of out of the way. It gets by window. But because Syngoniums are so resilient, she doesn't like cause any issues. I love Syngoniums. They're so easy, guys. Things that I've learned from this plant, um, I find that when I over fertilize it, so anytime this plant was in LECA or I fertilize with a nutrient solution, you get more of these weird leaves. So if the nutrients are too strong, a lot of the green overgrows in a way. And that's when you get these uneven leaves here. Sometimes they work out. Like this looks pretty much like an arrowhead. It's This one's pretty even, but you can see <laughs> this green part. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> these ones are the newer growth. And I haven't fertilized this plant in a while. And so that's why these leaves look this way. I still get questions to this day because I, I, I do, do I? I forget what, <laughs> what propagation videos I have out, but I'm pretty sure I have a mojito propagation video. I still get questions about how to bring back the variegation, even people messaging me on Instagram. You kind of have to cut above where the last variegated leaf is. If you have a leaf like this and then everything else above is like solid green, chances are those top ones won't be variegated even though you cut them up. There is a chance if the variegation streak on the stem runs in the path of the node, then it can be variegated and you should try it out. In my experience though, I haven't been lucky. Um, there may have been a few times where I've been surprised, but if it's like I said, and you have like a bunch of green and you propagate the green part in single node cuttings, I haven't had any luck with those ones. But yeah, rule of thumb, cut above the last variegated leaf. Hopefully that node attached to that leaf will push out a variegated leaf. And it's not, it's genetic based. It's not related to light or anything. Anyhow. <laughs> I feel like I'm rambling more in this recording than, than the previous one. One of my favorite Syngoniums. I am so... And like I have some propagate. I'm not going to grab her because she's all the way in the back there. I have some propagating. They're doing well. There's some in my living room. I'll put a clip here from my houseplant tour. But yeah, she's doing well. Also, super easy, guys. That one isn't even living under a lot of light and she's thriving. So yeah, the fourth one is a Syngonium Mojito. Okay, so we're at the end, thank God. <laughs> the last plant is the Syngonium Wendlandii. She's at the very corner of um, this room and she's covered by a lot of plants. So it's a Syngonium Wendlandii in the corner and then next to it is a Syngonium Mojito and then a whole bunch of other plants. I don't 
necessarily look at her. I think I brought her out for my houseplant tour and that was the first time I really looked at her in a while. She's stunning guys. Obviously she's like covered by a lot of plants so she doesn't get a lot of light. That's what I love about her. She doesn't need a lot. I get to ignore her and she just pushes out a lot of leaves. What was the picture? I, I swear there was a picture from like a year ago. Guys you can't see me. I'm trying to find the picture because now I'm like doubting myself. I'm like did I just want to show this plant to you? I can't find the picture from a year ago. Where is it? <laughs> okay I found the picture. <laughs> so here's a picture. Wow that took forever. Here's a picture from a year ago. So similar to the, the mojito, I just constantly propagated her and just put the cuttings in pond where the mother plant was. It resulted in this, guys. What is going on? I love this syngonium. But yeah, I can't tell you how many are in here because like I said, I just keep chopping and propping and I keep forgetting this. This was sent to me as a free plant. I didn't even know about this plant before and this I'm pretty sure this was two years ago oh do I have the clip if I have the clip clap clap <laughs> I can't talk I can't talk oh my god if I have the clip future Kevin please put it here I I don't think I ordered this that's weird <laughs> Um, and I was so shocked and I was so thankful for that. Like I said, I ignore her a lot of the time. She's in my corner. I don't look at her. <laughs> and she just rewards me with all this like beautiful foliage. Like can you, I can't even handle her. They, I guess they appreciate being pretty moist, but they can withstand um, drynesses. <laughs> drynesses, dry spells. Okay, so the last plant in this update video is the Syngonium Wenlandii. Okay guys, I guess that's it. I am so sorry. I feel like my voice was gone in half of this video. This is, oh, I can't believe this is the second time I film, I'm filming the exact same video. But anyhow, thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.